Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a fun little one for you today. Until very recently, this was known as the Apex Terra 16T. Uh, basically, it went through a facelift and a little bit of a naming change, but this is really a case of brand new look, same great taste. This is the Apex Remote 16R now instead of T. They just changed the alphabet soup on it a little bit. Um, obviously, the whole interior exterior of this is looking really, really good as compared, really not even that long ago uh, in the 2020 season. It looked totally drastically different, but the lighter skin pack I think is a really good addition on this one because it's probably going to sit in places where you may not always be able to run that air conditioner because this is something I think that is really a good fit for getting out in the M and the B, the mud and the blood, baby, uh, off the grid, uh, away from all the parks. Now, it's perfectly park functional, certainly, but there's aspects of this floor plan that make it work as, like, almost a toy hauler. The thing is, not every uh, person looking at a toy hauler needs it for like a Harley or a Goldwing or a side-by-side. -side. There's a lot of people, like um, I'm looking into e-bikes myself right now. I'm actually really interested in, in maybe picking one up. Um, and I'd be open to some feedback on those. If anyone has any suggestions, leave me an e-bike suggestion in the comments. I'd appreciate the help there because I don't know how much about them. But um, this has the ability to load like kayaks, screen rooms, e-bikes, traditional bicycles. For a small camper that weighs less than 3,000 pounds, which has become increasingly hard to find, if you want a trailer with a normal bathroom, not a, a toilet where the shower and the toilet are one room, under 3,000 pounds, them's about as rare as frog's hair. But I got one right here. I, I don't know why. I don't know why I shifted it into whatever. I don't even know what voice that is. I just know I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. <laughs> Now, normally about this time, I jump right on inside one of these things, and we're actually going to get there in just a moment. First of all, I want to kind of really demonstrate how, how this one is more than just a little camper. This is a smaller hauler. Uh, it, you know, it's not necessarily a full-on toy hauler in the, in the idea of like a motorcycle, a side-by-side, -side, a, a gold wing, but uh, you know what? Look at this. The rear bed folds out of the way, and we'll get to see this all sorts of different ways on the inside. This is the rear bed area. You see it on the left, how it folds totally out of the way, and even all the way under the dinette, there is wide open front to back, roughly 16 foot, uh, foot of floor space in here. Now, I I'll be fair, there aren't cargo tie downs. That might be something you want to potentially consider adding or get some pool noodles or some foam bricks or something like that. Like if you've got a big long like two seater kayak, you might actually be able to get that to fit in here because you could always get that uh, table up out of the way and have more vertical space down there in the end. But uh, I mean, even a little <laughs> moped, traditional bicycles, e-bikes, I mean, Think of all the different things that you could do with this. This is a fun little camper. And because it is such like a signature calling card function of this floor plan, I wanted to start it in like traveling cargo. Well, I guess what I normally call road mode. Normally to me, that means with the slides closed. But I think in this one, it actually means in like cargo function mode, how you might have it when you're rolling down the road right over here. Um, because, you know, this rear area, although not a true toy hauler, actually kind of folds up into like a garage function, you know? Now, just for full transparency, just to help kind of address the question, one of the things I wanted to show you here is the bed in like mid-transition mode so that you get to see it is uh, what I like to call a bendy bed. Now, as I was looking at this floor plan on Coachman's website, it said this was a 54 by 80 bed. And I got to looking, and I realized that this is only a 7 foot wide trailer. It's not 7 and a half foot wide like most of the Apex Nanos. And it has that like little headboard area over here. And I'm like, how could that possibly be an 80 inch bed? And it ain't. <laughs> I busted out the tape measure, checked it by hand. This is 54 by 74. So I think it definitely falls more on the size of like, a, uh, a full size bed. If uh, you know you're a solo person running around, it's going to treat you just fine. Um, if you're going to sleep here with somebody else, you you better know them because uh, you're going to be so close together that in some third world countries, uh, come morning time, you'd legally be married. 
And I like to try to answer questions like that proactively for people so they don't have to worry about it. Now, um, when you're in a small camper like this, everything has kind of two functions. You might be wondering as you look around this thing, like where would you put the TV? You see that little sticker next to that like bed hold back little, I don't know, hole in the wall? <laughs> That's not a very flowery way of phrasing it, but it is technically accurate. That is where TV backers mounted in the wall because you actually have TV hookups up here. Um, because of that, uh, I, I think that that would actually make this the foot side of the bed for most people, although it's not necessarily terrible to use this as the head side of the bed and uh, use one of these shelves up here. You could actually detach that cargo netting if you wanted to have like an alarm clock or a phone charge station or something like that. Now, one of the nice things about this is it does have total breeze across window coverage there because uh, that window with the uh, the kind of blackout-ish nightshade sort of thing pulled down uh, right across from this one would give you some excellent airflow. Now, let's talk about these because I don't know that I necessarily, I don't always love cargo netting in a camper. But it does make for a very easy, lightweight storage solution. You can take them up, put them down, kind of use them a couple different ways. What do you guys think about that? And by the way, all the cabinetry in here is pocket screwed, which is something you don't often get in a little camper like this. Something else that is really nice is this does have a normal six and a half foot ceiling height. And you might notice it also still maintains that little kind of mini vault that you get out of like the uh, Apex Nano series. This actually really began as an offshoot from the Apex Nanos and then sort of grew up onto its own. Now down here, that's your furnace down below and a microwave right there. These do not have a propane oven option. I just want to make that known. It kind of seems odd to me that it doesn't. Um, I, I actually, and, and hear me out on this, what is your take on this? I sort of wish it had no microwave either because if I'm gonna do cooking in a little camper like this, I'm probably going to do it outside in the little mini cooktop outdoor station, like with a griddle or something like that, um, you know, so that I'm not adding a bunch of extra heat into the little RV here. Now it is a small kitchenette, but I do love the fact they put some fairly reasonable storage in this. You've got the, uh, the drawer space there. And um, if I've got a couple little notes on this kitchen, I, I think I would prefer one of those kind of like vertically stacked two burner stovetops, sort of like Wolf Pup uses versus the side by side uh, station here, just because I think it gives us a little bit more prep space. And I happen to really like that stainless circular sink, although I know regular Halet viewer, Mr. Samuel L. Martin III will say, I don't like round sinks. And to that I say, that's fair. Different strokes for different folks. I'm just going to point out what's here and you decide what works for you. Now, flip it around the other direction here. I'm going to see if I can do a power crunch and sit up from this position as I'm lying on the bed. Actually, that's a, a better way to view the vault on the ceiling right there. You can really trace that. Now, notice too, you've got that big power vent fan up top. That is one of those things these did not used to have, and I think that was probably one of the very best additions that ever came into this little, what was called Terra, now called Remote Series. Um, they don't do a privacy shade on the window, so I actually kind of like the frosty glass on it. It gives me light while maintaining privacy, and if I need to see who's knocking on the front door, it's not, you know, like there aren't a billion other windows in this thing to peek around. That's actually something this does very, very well. From the, uh, the front window to the, you know, breeze across the dinette windows, this thing's got a lot of glass and a lot of class, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm not even going to call that a nerdism. It's not even worth it. <laughs> More of that cargo netting stuff. Again, do you prefer doors or I actually, I think here it makes a little bit more sense because next to the fridge, I don't know if there's enough room for like a normal door. Now you might be looking at that big old black thing in there and going, what is that? Um, well, that is actually what will help us uh, convert this dinette down into a sleeper, which I think is pretty cool. Of course, it's also absolutely triggering me right now that I left that table uh, a little bit crooked. It's like, uh, I don't have like, I don't have real OCD. That's a real crippling problem some people have, but I do have a certain level of specificity that I like out of things, and I am really annoying myself currently looking at this thing. <laughs> One of the cool things here, because it has those free floating folding legs, you can move that table. You, you saw you could fold it down. You could take it outside for picnic. You could do whatever. Now, these do not have a 12-volt fridge option. These are really made kind of with off-grid camping in mind. 
And for that purpose, a gas electric two-way fridge is really hard to beat because on propane mode, they are easily the most uh, 12 volt battery power efficient fridge out there. Really, really barely sipping off the battery, not gulping anything. Now remember, you got that big old vent fan out here for like window cross breeze. So in the bathroom, they did offer only a small little four inch fart fan. Although that being said, you've got uh, the little side fart exhaust window, uh, along with the fact that you can always upgrade the fan. And this is actually one of the opportunities that I think a Hangs Vortex fan would be a perfect, perfect solution here. Because if you want an inexpensive but high exhaust uh, fan, I just don't know that there's a better option than those. Now the shower pan's a little dirty from me stepping in it to take my stupid little toilet and shower selfies over here. But I, I'm not doing that just as a goof, by the way. Someone's like, hey, you're always funny how you're doing that. I'm actually doing it so that you get to see how a 6'3 dude fits in these things. Hope you appreciate the extra little effort there. Now, one of the first things I actually wanna mention here is where these do stand apart uh, a little bit differently from the majority of the smaller Apexes. So Apex makes tandem axle models that are uh, eight foot wide. They make uh, seven and a half foot wide single and tandem axle models. And then you have the remote series, which actually gets all the way down to a seven foot body, very similar to that wolf pup that you see right there. The idea here is to make this a little smaller, a little more compact, something that is going to be a little bit easier to tote around and get into those spaces. The bigger trailers just, cannot like you know national parks and stuff like that that have length restrictions uh and not to mention just not everybody has a giant giant vehicle um this is something an appropriately specced out tow package suv might be able to handle you don't even necessarily need like a half ton or i mean a mid-sized vehicle would, would drag us all over you got that tow package ford freaking ranger buddy or uh the uh you know toyota tacoma which is like i mean it's a japanese ranger really if we're if we're calling a spade a spade and a duck a duck, it's like I drive a Kia Soul, that's a Korean Mini Cooper. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's what they are. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's easier to see around. It's less weight. This thing is small, it's light, it rides low to the ground. And these come standard with that front bike rack you're seeing there. But part of their little off-grid package is the double propane tank uh, with auto changeover regulator. So you can spend more time camping off-grid and there are room for two batteries back there. You see the handy little toy lock, again, very handy for those kayaks, e-bikes, the, the, the little things that you're gonna bring along with this. Cause once you unload it, you don't really have room inside the camper. Not a true toy hauler, kind of a pseudo smaller hauler. Now, uh, storage below the dinette bench, you could reach it from the inside or you could obviously get to it from out here. And the um, adjustable legs on those stable steps, that right there is a very, very handy feature. Uh, these come standard with uh, what the uh, uh, Apex Nano calls their like off-road package, where basically it's a little bit of a suspension lift as well as the, uh, the bigger tires to give you some greater ground clearance. And in terms of total size, man, that's it. It is just not not super, super large. They put the biggest awning on it they could, which is nice, though, and uh, it does have LED lighting under it. One thing I would frankly prefer to see on these, I'd, I'd actually like to get rid of the outside speakers entirely. I would rather this RV almost have, like, no stereo system. I'd rather just uh, bring a Bluetooth speaker and play something right off my phone. That's just me personally. Um, uh, it, it to, because to me, it just feels like it's, it's two less holes in the side of the RV that I got to worry about checking on sealant every single year. Now, not everybody, uh, it, it, like one of the most common questions I get with outside kitchens is, can I remove it? So I actually kind of like the idea that this is not a full on camp kitchen, especially considering this RV is something that is designed to kind of get off grid a little bit. Well, the little refrigerators that they often put in a camp kitchen, they're residential power only. You need park power or a generator. It doesn't fit this idea of off grid camping. So the fact that I could maybe just load a, a cooler in that, uh, oh man, we got some wicked sunshine coming in. Sorry about that. It does kind of look cool beaming across this thing though. <laughs> it's, it's like the camping gods are going, oh, take a look at the apex. There we go. Let me take a copper squat over here so you can see it a little bit better. Nice contrast on that rear and sidewall there. But what I was getting at, if, uh, you want to just bring a cooler and put it in that back cargo bay. You could even leave the cooler under the bed if you want. Or you could actually, because this is basically, even though there's a, a, a two burner cooktop on it, that's basically a drawer. 
if you want just storage outside, that's just a drawer. You could pull that out of there without actually like reconstructing or modifying anything. Now, um, we've already seen uh, inside the back of this thing like we're doing an, uh, a lower GI endoscope a couple times, so I won't do that to you again. What I do wanna mention though here is um, that rear door, it's, it's a full door. It has a normal entry handle, it has a normal key lock, it has a normal deadbolt, and I love the fact they didn't mount the spare tire like up to your flipping eyeballs on this thing like a lot of these little guys are doing well it looks cool it looks like a jeep yeah but it sucks to try to wrestle that thing this is way way easier when i don't have to like you know worry about dropping it on my foot and and a full bumper where you can actually put like a sewer tube not every little camper is doing that and coachman's very good about this they put all the hookups they usually can all the way in the back corner Although with that, uh, the, the bed set up on this, they didn't have all the opportunities. What they did here is like our black tank flush and our fresh water, all of our water stuff is up front there. Whereas um, the, uh, the electrical stuff is back here. I actually kind of like how they separated that. I know for a fact that it really isn't an issue if you put those all together. It does feel better to have them separate uh, though. Um, man, I feel like there's something major I'm not talking about. Oh no, there's two major things. Hang on. And I, I don't know how I didn't lead with these. I don't know how I missed this, but two major aspects of this RV. First of all, on top of this, you have a 100 watt factory solar panel standard, which is not nearly as much as maybe some other brands might have. But remember, this thing has um, intentionally minimal lighting, so you really can't zap the battery hard there. You do have, uh, you know, like a nice big fan or something like that, but you also have that two way refrigerator. There's not a lot in this RV that will heavily tax the battery or batteries. If you're going to go off grid, one of the things people are, ooh, I need solar, I need a generator. Uh, you also need to seriously consider what kind uh, and how many batteries you're going to put on this thing. And if you don't know about that stuff, you give our outfitters here a call. We're gonna help guide you through these things. You don't need, you don't need a salesperson. You don't need someone who's going to tell you uh, you know, convince you to buy something, you're already kind of thinking that, right? So allow our team to just help guide you a little bit and make sure that you've, you've been outfitted with the correct RV, with the correct equipment. Now, uh, one of the other things I want to mention on this is Asdell. Uh, Coachman's been using Asdell way before it was cool. Actually, they were using it uh, so long ago, we didn't even used to talk about it because nobody knew anything about it. Um, let me get my big head in the way of the sun. Ooh, that, that certainly looks a lot better. Hold on, there we go. Um, this is not easy in reverse view, by the way. But um, they were using Asdell before it was cool. It was only on the outside wall of the RV, though. They have since made some changes so that uh, they are using now what I call double Asdell, where it's Asdell on the inside and outside wall. Now, this is a six-sided laminated product. Roof, floor, sidewalls, basically everything on this... Uh, all aluminum framed uh, anywhere. It's laminated all over the place. There's not a, the structure of this is not stick built. Now, wall partitions might be stick built, but those are lightweight, low cost, and basically just used, because it's not a house, we're just kind of playing house just to kind of help separate room A from room B, which is basically just the bathroom from everything else. And I think we can all agree, we definitely want the bathroom to be separated from everything else, especially on a Taco Tuesday. So if you're looking to get away from it all, take in a little bit of that setting sun over there, which sounds pretty good to me right now. Maybe get a little drink in your hand and either pull out your favorite camping chair or just sit on a stump. I think this is a good camper to get you there and do so comfortably. Um, and what would you put in this thing? Like, how would you use it? Would you use it just like a normal couples model? This, you know, I never thought of this before. This could be actually a really interesting, good, like, single parent model where you've got the master bed, you've got the, the, the dinette in the front for the kiddo. This could be a nice little, uh, you know, weekend getaway that you can repurpose. Like, maybe you want to take a kayaking trip some other time or a buddy camper. Why did I not think of this sooner? Every time I wrap my head around this one, I find another way to look at it. And that's what I think is so cool about it. It's more than just a small camper. It's, it's like 
It's your base camp for a really fun weekend getaway. That's what this thing is right here. Um, I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can check for pricing and availability. And if you appreciate the fair way that we go about things, showing you the highs and the lows all together, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Know that we'll give you fair information. And remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees because nobody likes those. We don't like them either. That ain't fun uh, for either of us. So we just, we don't do that. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.